systems have to be changed. Getting back to Kidda, that guy with tuberculosis, that's an, a, a, a bacterial infection which can be overcome by antibiotics, right? Intravenously, they give them uh, a strong a strong antibiotic in a cer certain dosages, yeah. a certain dose. Of course, mega doses of vitamin C would work wonders too. But the point. But is, it's curable. Right. That's the point of it. the point of the whole thing is the law must never be applied to those who are not curable. And that is lacking. Yeah, and we're that is lacking. And we're very passionate about this subject that we're going over. This is very important. So, I mean, forgive me if I know I only had one inductee so far into the Chisler's Hall of Shame, but you know what? What about the, that one? The biggest inductee is always going to be the Republican Congress. <laughs> that one, what? What is that? Uh Box oh no, that's the uh, no, that's the for the promo. Oh, that's the product, the product that I've been I've been uh, I've been uh, selling okay. on the radio on the radio station, the, the health product. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Let us. Oh, we got plenty of time. Let us sink our teeth into these readings. Well. And I don't know what these readings are going to be. Well. Because this is totally unrehearsed. This show. You know, uncensored, corporate and FCC free, and totally unpredictable. What what's going to come out of our mouths, or what we are going to talk about? Uh, the stuff I write down that I talk about at the beginning of the show. That's my that's the intro to the show. Um, I just was so busy and so tired this past week. I just didn't have much material to to present to you. So we're going to be doing extra readings, um, and um, that's about it, really. So well, it's applicable that we were discussing the disabled and etc. Right. And I have here a personal letter, which was sent to our local paper by myself in regard to something of that nature okay oh yes 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 uh, on occasion actually more often than than occasionally uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman writes articles for our local northern New Jersey newspaper uh, called the record which also owns I believe the Herald News and it was in regard to a letter which was exposing uh, what the Motor Vehicle, State Department of Motor Vehicles, wants to do in New Jersey. Proof now required for disabled parking tag. Okay. Let me get, let me see if I have this straight. Some non-disabled people are abusing and misusing disability plates stickers and the like. So the state's Motor Vehicle Commission is going to punish the disabled by forcing them to go to a doctor every three years to be recertified as still being a disabled. My head is about to explode. That means he's very upset. Here's an original thought. Punish the abusers. Same thing with car insurance. They're, they're, it's a, New Jersey is a no-fault state. Why are good drivers being penalized for the careless drivers? You in uh, in the uh, good old days, there was a there was a state fund where the bad drivers went in New Jersey. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, for instance, uh, there's a company called New Jersey Manufacturers in Car Insurance for Good Drivers, and it's, it's, it's actually one of the very cheapest insurance companies you can hook up with. 
and then for the other drivers that um, I'm not saying you have to be bad but you know from bad drivers to to drivers that do not have a specific occupation that gives them the discount they call it the um, New Jersey reinsurance company okay but the point is good drivers that have been good drivers for many years older people especially that are conscientious law-abiding and they have clean records they should be um, they should reap the rewards of having of, of caring about driving safely and properly all right they should they should receive a discount as their reward the cleaner their record for the longest amount of time supposedly all state sends you a check every six months or so that you don't have accidents in yeah but I've, I've I've tried I I've looked at quotes from many companies they never sent one to me and you know what the quote was based on six months not a full year and and, yeah, and even even more. minimum liability was quite expensive <laughs> even minimum liability by law is quite expensive so you know it's I mean I found the company at the most reasonable company uh, we do give consumer tips here uh, IFA uh, insurance company in New Jersey okay uh, they are the, the quote they give you is based on one year and they have the all-time lowest rate so that's the company um, I deal with and also one of the employees of, at the uh, Newsletter Censored Research Center she has it also yeah, I think they do raise you after a year. Yeah, after so. after a year, you do get a raise, but it's still much yeah. cheaper than all the others, and you get a a quote based on a full year. Mm. It's paperless. You got to do it online, which I don't mind. I don't mind. I made my payment online. I applied online. I got the quote online. You know, it's the way to go for people that have access to a computer. Now, if you're some hillbilly living in a treehouse. Hey. But you have a, a pick, if you have a pickup truck, you're out of luck. Yeah, Willie, you, you're a, you're an unlucky duck out of luck. <coughs> duck Nation. I saw a little bit of. Uh, um, I don't know if it's Duck Nation. It's Duck something. It's duck Nation. There's a the guys have long beards like ZZ Top, yeah. and they're kind of like uh, they're like. Uh, Red, like rednecks and they're kinda, rednecks and, and they got they got rich and they got money and uh, of course if they got money they they got attractive wives <laughs> much young much their junior right much younger than them and big SUVs <laughs> oh yeah what a turbo and they go into the swamp and they they uh, they hunt frogs and the gators and longer neck turtles. My brother has one of those big ass turbo diesel Dodge Ram trucks, you know, like like uh, Walker Texas Ranger hey. had what was uh, uh, um, Chuck Norris, yeah, Chuck yeah. Norris. But you know, yeah, it has a new one, turbo diesel. But anyway, uh, the, I watched the show. The guys are pretty cool. They were they were talking about the guy Sky was is funny. The uncle, yeah, the guy was saying. Right, he's you know, always drink. He's all, he's got a container and he's got a glass of sweet tea with him all the time. Too, too sweet. All the time. Too, I, I'm a I, I'm a low carb program. I don't. And I he don't, had a heart attack. Oh well, sure, that yeah. sugar is is toxic to the body. Anyway, his daughter was going on her first date and Sadie, yeah. And she asked permission. She's 13 or 14, and she asked her father's permission, and he was upset. And he took the the, the kid that was going to go with her into the woods. Took him into in the, the woods. Swamp. I guess to scare him. <laughs> he wants to see what kind of man he is. He wants to learn about this guy that wants to date my daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt sorry for him, man. He, all these <laughs> these big guys taking him, uh, uh, what is it, wild boar hunting or taking him into the swamp? These guys, they, 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 they make the duck calls, you know, and they, they never work. You better get They never I, do any work. I think, I think the date was, sh no, they don't. I think the date was chaperoned. I, I, where I, you go? Besides, I think the date was yeah, chaperone. Yeah, of course. I can picture him right now, him and his buddies, big guys, looking at this kid. You know what? 
you better get my daughter home before 11 o'clock, 11 p.m. or else. <laughs> there's, a, there's a country song, Rodney Atkins sings it, uh, just cleaning my gun. It's, it's like the same thing, you know, the daughter's going out with this guy and he's, when a kid comes to pick her up, Rodney's cleaning his gun. Yeah, I'll be cleaning my, <laughs> I'll be cleaning my gun tonight. Yeah. And make sure Just give him an you, idea. Make you know? sure you got my daughter. Get her home, home here about nine thirty. She's got a she's got a curfew. <laughs> nah, not nine thirty. God, unless yeah, these people said. unless these people get up with the sun like the chickens. Although my chickens got up late, actually, they 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 actually got up when I when I woke up. If Isn't we get to it, I think we have something on uh, chickens here today. Chickens. Yeah. Okay, that article. You, you finished that, right? Yes. That was... It was short but sweet. It was short but sweet. You could have actually went on and on. Yeah. You could have droned on a little longer than that. I don't drone. Well, you... I hit the target and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Get to the point. That's right. That article, that newspaper article was written by the one and only, the man you, you hear in the background, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Excellent article. And, and there were many more where that came from in the past and there will be many more in the future. Next. The world's first beef burger. You said beef? Beef burger created from stem cells. Oh. Has a texture that's closer to cake than steak. I don't think I would like this. The burger fried in public unveiling in London on Monday lacks the fattiness of regular meats and could be described as an animal protein cake. Let me tell you something. I don't think the cattle ranchers are going to be too happy about this. The five ounce I'm, burger, I'm not. which costs more than 250,000 euros or 330,000 hey, to produce. If I'm going to eat a phony bologna burger, I'd rather eat a veggie burger which costs next to nothing than to pay that kind of money for some laboratory created a Franken burger let's call it that was developed by Mark Post of Maastricht in University with funding from Google co-founder Sergey Brin well let him eat it Post is among scientists, including those at Modern Meadow and New Harvest, who are experimenting with ways to grow meat in labs as an alternative to raising livestock. Oh my god, growing meat in a laboratory. Which contributes 18% of greenhouse gas emissions and uses 30% of the world's ice-free land. What about uh, what about the uh, the oil companies pouring fluorocarbons into the atmosphere? Hey. And what about hey. cutting down the the hey. trees in the rainforest? They don't mention that. Hey. Hey. But they mention livestock, which we which, need that which, oil, which has been around for hundreds of thousands of years. What? We need that oil. We don't have my electric cars. That's because they prevented us from having electric cars. So we need that oil. That's because they prevented us from having electric cars. You think the electric car and the and the and the uh, the hybrids are a new invention? No. They've been around for many forty decades. years, huh? Forty years. At least forty years. And if they and if they and if they backed up Nikol, Nikolai Tesla with plenty of funding way back when, we we would have been. You know how advanced our technology would have been today mm -hmm. if if they if they did the right thing and backed Tesla. Just think about it. Just think of instead of Edison, Tesla. Yeah. We are catering to beef eaters who want to eat beef in a sustainable way. I'm sorry. Schoenwald, the author of a book called *The Taste of Tomorrow*, said the burger had a cake-like quality because of the lack of fat. Let them they? eat cake. Let them eat Let them cake. Eat burger. Let them eat Frankenburgers.
because of the lack of fat content and fell somewhere between a Boca brand veggie burger and a McDonald's burger. Hannah Ritzler, a food scientist, and the other tasting volunteer said the surface was crunchy and the inside was very close to meat, though lacking juiciness. Beef juice and saffron were added to the burger to enhance the color. Post said he was still working on the twin challenges of improving taste and growing fat. Commercial production could begin in a decade or two. The muscle stem cells taken by harmless biopsy from living cows Blech, are lovely. fed and nurtured so they multiply to create muscle tissue. God. Oh, excuse me for the photo op. I, I, I do that for photo op. Uh, the cells grow purposes. into strands. This is gross what you're hearing. And 20,000 of them are combined to create one burger. Oh, God. Alrighty. One sample of cells is enough to create as much as 20,000 tons of meat in the lab. I'd rather eat falafel or veggie burger. Very veggie burgers, if they're done right, can be very nutritious. Post use fetal bovine serum taken from the blood of calf fetuses oh, gosh. <laughs> to multiply the cells after testing as many as 10 alternative nutrients that prove to be inferior. So the, the elitists and the conservatives, they don't mind, they don't mind cattle fetuses being killed and, 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 and ground up and used. They like a good steak now. Well, they're, yeah, they're beef eaters. Hey, look, I love a good steak, too. Don't get me wrong. I love, I love uh, uh, good steaks, you know, that are tender. E even a chuck with the bone, a cheap chuck steak can be very tender also. The one with the bone in it, you know, and the list goes on and on. A uh, skirt steak is outstanding, by the way. Very, very tender. But listen, even if it's a high-quality hamburger, I'm not eating this shit. I'm not eating this lab-created garbage. The cost of fetal bovine serum, the most expensive component of the process, is the main obstacle to mass production. Fetal bovine serum costs $250 per liter, with as many as three fetuses required to produce each liter. I wonder if it's good for bodybuilders to drink this serum. I wonder That's if they get... All right, A-Rod, calm down. <laughs> A-Rod. It's too early to know whether the public is ready to adopt meat that comes from the lab. Yeah. Though so far, there hasn't been much organized resistance from vegetarians or industrial producers. Yeah, because they don't know about it yet. Accept acceptance of in vitro fertilization could serve to gauge society's response to cultured beef. What's weirder, he said, growing meat in a dish or growing people in a dish? You know what? If, if it, you know it's not weird to me, growing uh, body parts and needed organs by people who lack them I think that's not strange at all. I think that's very, very Christian, a Christian thing to do. If somebody, instead of somebody going on a waiting list for an organ, and they, by the way, they, they've done it. They, they, they've done it successfully. Grow the organ. Freaky is. Any of that stuff. Any of that. Grow an organ specifically for you with your DNA, right? Stem cell? Well, somebody, uh, somebody's stem cells. Well, it should stem be... Stem cells can turn into a, any kind of cells. Well, they could, they could use the person that's yeah. alive they that is that lacking uh, something. Like, let's say the poor soul was in uh, Iraq or Afghanistan, Afghanistan and, and had their legs blown off. <laughs> to be able to grow new legs from their own 
stem cell, the DNA, I think is a wonderful thing. I don't think that's weird. To help people, paralyze people, I don't think that's weird at all. You know, but to make a hamburger and expect people to eat this? Well, the Republicans would like that to be privatized, my friend, okay? Remember that. Well, if it's privatized, It'll I cost. hope you realize only the rich will, be able, to, will be able to get a limb or a, a, uh, a kidney or uh, any other organ grown or an arm or any appendage. They would Only the rich can afford to have that done if they privatize that. Well, why would they want, they want to call the herd now, so why would they want to help the poor stay around? If they want the poor to drop dead, that's Jeez. true. If, you know, if for those that accept that conspiracy, if, if they want the poor to drop dead, because there's too many people on earth using the supposedly their natural resources that, that they think belongs to the rich, you know, why would they want to help any right. of the poor? Exactly. You know, um... <clears throat> An expanded ordinance on the raising of chickens will now allow residents living in typical residential neighborhoods to join roomier homesteads in being able to have a few of the egg-producing fowl. You know, you know what would make a good chicken coop uh, 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 for for for, po for po folk? One of those big uh, sweater containers, like seventy-five gallon plastic totes. Really? Yeah, actually, they make an excellent uh, house for stray cats, right? You know, for the winter, you just make necessary hole in them so they can get in and out. Same thing with the chickens. The Borough Council of Bloomingdale in New Jersey, Bloomingdale's northern Passaic County adopted the amendment to its Agricultural Uses Ordinance on July the 23rd. Mm -hmm. Officials said the growing, healthy eating trend of consuming fresh eggs led to the ordinance change. Right, and you can monitor what you feed your hens. So you, you, can, you can eat organic, your, they are guaranteed certified organic eggs. Although residents living in R130 zone, which comprises lots of three acres or more, had been permitted to have chickens, residents with smaller properties could not. Under the change, residents in the more typical R10 and R20 zones, which have lot sizes of 10,000 square feet and 20,000 square feet, will be able to keep up to four chickens. You know, chickens do an outstanding job of cleaning your yard. They eat practically anything they can get their little beaks on, and, and, they, and they will fertilize your property quite well, including your veggie garden, herb garden. They're great to have. I, I had a couple of uh, Japanese bantams when I was uh, in high school, and uh, they, they, they they bond with you. They they scream and to get you to go out and feed them. They ah. mine used to look through the uh, the back door through the glass and and say, "Hey, wake up! Let's come out here and play." You know, they, they they like they used to uh, like me to uh, chase them. Ah. They, you know, they used to play games and uh, with me and uh, they cleaned the yard. Uh, and uh, you know, even if you don't. Besides feeding them, they actually find food with no problem. They go and they eat grass and weeds and seeds and insects and, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they're great animals to have around. And, and, and if you have hens, you could feed them like, um, like uh, flaxseed meal, you know, to uh, have uh, high omega-3 or hemp seed for, to get high omega-3 uh, yolks. Mayor Jonathan Dunleavy said the updated ordinance seeks to accommodate residents who want fresh aid. Right. And he said he has received at least a half dozen requests from residents wanting to own chickens for the production of eggs. And this is an excellent, an excellent solution, solution and article that you're reading. Excellent. I am in ecstasy. 
over the, this article. The ordinance change will mean such residents will not have to go through a costly zoning variance process. Exactly. The ordinance also establishes coop sizes. Coop requires sizes. residents to obtain licensing by the Board of Health. At the hearing on the ordinance, Bob Albert Miller of Mary Street asked if the borough will be involved in checking that residents are maintaining a clean coop Jesus Christ. once a permit is secured. You mean to tell me they got to come and inspect yes, your coop they do. Yes, and yes. they got to tell you, oh, your coop is too small. Oh, you got to clean your coop. See, there's too many laws and too many regulations involved in this. What, ner what right do they have to come on your property and tell you, hey, your coop needs to be a little bigger. Hey, your coop needs to be swept out. Don Levy said the borough will enforce the ordinance. Damn politicians. Yeah, because they want to find people. They want to, they want to raise revenue through fines, right? Which will come under the domain of the Board of Health. Oh, God. Edward Simone, a member of the planning board, said coops, which must be disinfected, can be a maximum of 20 square feet and a maximum of six feet high. Now he wants you to disinfect them? Runs cannot exceed 10 square feet per chicken. Yeah, but it's your property. What if you want a, what if you want a humongous hen house? You can't have it? And all coops must be located in the backyard. This goes back to the law of a person who wanted to have a victory garden in the front yard instead of grass. They wanted veggies and herbs grown in the backyard and in the front yard so they will have more produce. Well, guess what? The town fined them like a several hundred dollars per day. They were fined heavily for having a garden in the front, which is, is, is crazy. It's like, uh, it, it, it's dishonest. It's fas fascist. <laughs> I mean, and this, they're doing the same thing with, with a hen house. And all coops must be located in the backyard at least 10 feet from the property line. Okay. Hey, listen, when those chickens wander, they don't know about property lines. The ordinance also includes cleaning and food storage requirements. Hey. And prohibits residents from keeping noisy chickens. Now, how are you supposed to control that? Gag them. Put muzzles on their beaks? Yeah. Now, who is it? Who, what town is this? This is Bloomingdale. Bloomingdale. Blooming, uh, excuse me, Bloomingdale, Northern Passaic County, New Jersey. I have a, an itch in the middle of my forehead that I need to scratch just for you, just for the politicians that run, that control the town of Bloomingdale, New Jersey. Uh, oh. Councilwoman Linda Shortman said an R10 zone property is too small for a coop. Referencing a friend in West Milford who owns chicken. What's wrong with having a smaller coop and less hens? The expanded Bloomingdale ordinance does not allow roosters. It takes all the fun out of having chickens. If you, if, if you don't have a rooster crowing, it takes all the fun out of it. Doesn't allow roosters. Screw you, Bloomingdale. Which are known to be noisy. Oh, too bad. <coughs> so what? People, <coughs> people are known to be noisy. Kids are known to be noisy. But Shortman said it cannot immediately be determined at birth whether D the bird is a hen or a rooster. Dogs that won't shut up are known to be noisy. Come on, give me a break. Even a parrot in a cage could scream out. Outside. Unbelievable. You know, I, I, as much as I love chickens, and I do appreciate you reading this, Bloomingdale, New Jersey, I, I you know, people, we're from New Jersey, but there is no more sleazier, greedier, uh, 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 um, more, more corrupt from a political standpoint than the state of New Jersey and possibly New York City can be that way too. But more, I would say more so New Jersey. 
more than New York. The Garden State. New York has laws. New York State has laws to help the mainstream and to help the poor. Somewhat. I think the Lemon Law is is in New York State for for used cars. But well, I got news for you, pal. There's a lot of lemons on the market now from Superstore Sandy. All those cars and trucks that were underwater you mean they're are on the market right now. You mean they're handyman specials? In other words... They're rotting out specials. In other words, you want it, dirt cheap, no pun intended. If, if you think you can fix it, here it is. Take it. Otherwise, they're scrap. They're good for scrap, right? Well, they yeah, but you don't know what is wrong with them. It's inside. Where the corrosion, the, the, the salt, the whatever, the destruction, the yeah. metal, and etc. It's all inside. You can't. It's you can't see it on the outside. All the corrosion. There's no cosmetic. They they, they fix that. Does it have to do with the salt?